Hello, I'm Marcello Rolando, the Reasonable Voice, thanking you for joining us and becoming one of the reasonable voices heard round the world. America, what stinks and what doesn't. One of the things the Trump have in common with the historical stink of despots, tyrants, and demagogues is the failure to learn from the past all glory gained by manipulation of the masses is fleeting, inviting an equal opposite reaction to lock her up. What stinks is a military on American soil aiding and abetting any executive branch to exclusively create law. A president determined to fight forest fires by raking leaves, and a Senate leader whose faith in his assumption that Southern conservatives are easily duped is so firmly grounded he unabashedly exhales the foul air of denying a president his constitutional right to appoint a Supreme Court justice. Sometimes truth must hurt before we rise from the stink clenching a swinging pendulum, recognizing life and lives, are our constant balancing act between good and evil. For example, Abraham Lincoln, November 19, 1863, versus Jim Jones, November 18, 1978. And the author of our Declaration of Independence, also selling his darker children. Often we act out by tipping life scale from home of the brave glory to aromatic delusions of grandeur, from honoring those who delivered on greater love hath no man to passing on standing up for veterans on hallowed ground. But the wave of reason exposes the right's treason. Some presidents delegate government's raison d'etre to preserve, protect, and defend to money men. But nothing stinks like the Wall Street puts. A plot by super-wealthy right-wing bankers and corporatists conspiring to enable Wall Street and the Pentagon to form a more perfect union, considering fascism, communism, and Nazism as viable solutions to 1933 Hoovervilles. Although Russians have invaded our electoral process on behalf of an administration comfortable with suppressing voting privileges, alienating NATO allies, and denying refugee asylum, all while attempting to placate a Turkish dictator by offering him his long-time political clerical foe as a consolation prize for forgiving a Saudi hit on a U.S. resident. Fortunately, our free press is beginning to rediscover the cost of their freedom is investigative reporting, because the only change that changes anything is change we make in ourselves. Reagan made a deal with Iran not to release American prisoners, so he could defeat Carter, just as Nixon colluded to prevent LBJ from getting two Vietnams to talk peace. Bush Cheney created the Great Recession, while Obama bailed out their too big to fail banker cohorts. Middle America is still paying the tab. Mega donors Anna Chenault and Miriam Adelson deposited America in the outhouses of Richard Nixon and Donald Trump. Former World Patent Marketing CEO Matt Whitaker, ensconced in FBI investigations into his alleged scams and threats with potentially serious civil or criminal consequences, smells like perfect sewage treatment plant for obstruction of justice. Perhaps our savory 2018 sweet was simultaneously voting for progressive issues and liberal Democrats, despite Georgia's candidate who purged the voting power of more than a million citizens now imbibing its state mansion with a smell of rot that resembles a festering cyst. What saves America from the prejudicial aromatic Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith welcoming a front-row seat to a public hanging, adding, Maybe we want to make it just a little more difficult for those liberal folks from those other schools to vote. What saves America? Her now facing the fragrance of a Justice for All runoff without Walmart. America's breath of fresh air is the pungent maneuvering of repetitious perversion of justice puncturing America 
is easily avoidable. Once we concede to our mirrors, we who buy stocks in the puppets of corporate vampires are what stinks America most. It's not just corporatism, but corporate individuals whose acceleration from a soaring personal bottom line is more delicious standing on the backs of customers racing on Black Friday to overconsume. It's not just the trumped, but predatory pickpockets polluting patriotism with Roger Stone and unaffordable health care. Life is more than the prize of one electoral victory. It is the journey waking us each day. For victory is not just for the swift, the new, or the young. Victory, like honor, comes from learning and sharing in a refreshing marriage, embracing the reason that willingly blossoms when the dirt of bullying bigotry, nepotistic hypocrisy, and prejudicial obstruction are shaken like dust from our roots. With freedom of choice, every new dawn invites every American into the arena, empowered by the courage of Admiral McRaven, tenacity of Stacey Abrams, determination of Beto O'Rourke, resilience of John J. Whalen, vigilance of Laura Hughes, and the common sense to not throw out experience with the soiled water. Rejecting the repugnant waste of being a fractured people, let us, on the shoulders of liberty, recast our national aura purging all pairings of poisonous stink, seizing instead daily moments of vision as America's most heroic bouquet. Thank you, and join us. Become one of the reasonable voices heard round the world.